Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Happy Sabbath to everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I am so excited to be here. I just couldn't wait to get here on this morning because I'm still bubbling and rejoicing from last week's service, our baptismal service where we had five candidates candidates and then we had our fellowship dinner later on that night and it was such a beautiful day and I'm telling you Yahweh met us in the place on last week and his spirit and his glory filled the house. We I want to say once again to Bishop W. Michael Fields and the Greater Refuge Temple Church thank you once again for allowing us to use your beautiful facility and uh, your deacon served us well and a special shout out to brother Rodney thank you brother Rodney you made our our, our way easy on last week are uh, we gonna uh, get ready to stand and invoke his presence because wherever the spirit of Yahweh is uh, there is liberty and so we want him to have freedom in this place, I don't know about you, but I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad just to be alive. I'm telling you, I'm glad to be just, al uh, just to be alive. To all of you all who, who are watching us on social network, uh, Yahweh bless you real good. And I'm telling you, don't go nowhere, stay right by that computer, don't touch that browser because uh, we have a word that's going to bless your life uh, even the better on this morning. So we're going to pray. Let us uh, pray. Father, we thank you once again for your mercies towards us and your kindness. This morning, Father, you deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. We lift our hands in total praise because you have been so good to us on this week. You made ways out of the ways that you, you allow us to go throughout the week with no harm, hurt, or danger to come upon us. And we say, thank you, Father. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. And we thank you for strength, Father. And we say thank you for that, O oh, Father. There is none like you. There is none like you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you glory and we give you honor, Father. We are praying for those who have lost loved ones on this week, Father. We are praying for those who can't seem to find their way. They lost out in this sinful world, Father. We ask you, Father, to go to the east, to the north, to the south, to the west. Let the wind blow. Let your breath of life blow on these people, oh, Father. Let them hear your name. Let them hear your word. Let them know that you are their hope. All they have to do is reach out and receive you in the name of Yeshua, you're standing by to touch them. Some folks need healing on this morning, Father. We pray for our sister Trinita. You know what she has need of. She needs a miracle. Father, we know that you're able to heal for you are a healer. You are a deliverer. The Father, we ask you to touch your body right now. Father, we pray for the Robinson family, for Bishop Robinson, the loss of his wife, Sister Ray. Oh, Father, she was a flower in your garden, a wonderful seed he on this earth. We thank you for her life and we celebrate her life. We honor her on this morning, oh Father. Father, we honor Mother Dancy, Father, who's going on 
to glory a couple of weeks ago. We thank you for her, Father. Now we lift our hands and we yield our vessels. We yield our heart, soul, and mind. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives. Father, open the ears of your people that they may hear your word. Father, use your messenger. Speak to your messenger and give a make that the people will have a life changing word that will bless them, that will give them hope. And Father, for those who are on their way, give them travel and mercies. But most of all, Father, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. We invite you into our temples. We invite you into our hearts, into our minds. Have your way. Father, forgive us of any sins we might have committed this week that we are not aware of. Forgive us, oh Father. Because we want to do the right thing because we do want to make it in. So accept our praise. Accept our offering. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remain standing. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For he has done great and marvelous things for me. Turn in your Bibles to Exodus 20 and starting with verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against our neighbors. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is the, thy neighbor's. And the people said, Amen. We will obey Elohim. Well, this is a beautiful Sabbath morning. It is windy. It is brisk. It is amazing, and we welcome you to A Touch of Grace Ministries. This is the part of the service where we stop and greet each other and fellowship with one another and check in and see how well our weeks went. Everybody in our social network, thank you for following us on today. Don't you know that he is doing something beautiful in our life, something wonderful, incredible, and awesome. Thank you, David Frazier, for that beautiful song. But well, we celebrate the wonderful things that he's doing in our life. Come on, put your hands together. God 
is doing something wonderful in me Something awesome and incredible And only he will get the glory God is doing yeah. something wonderful Incredible and awesome God is doing something wonderful in me Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. I can't say that enough. How was your week? Yahweh has been amazing this week. He has been wonderful this week. He has kept us this week. How many of you have had some experiences this week, and you want to give God, Yahweh, the praise? You want to let Elohim know that in spite of the craziness, in spite of the problems, in spite of the confusion you were blessed so to god be the glory great things he has done our god is greater than anything so we're going to start out with lord we lift your name on high for you are worthy great god halloween to be praised and we're going to get all the audience. If you know this song, you are to lift up your voices and praise God for his amazing wonder. Lord, I lift your name up high. Yes. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. You came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, if you know this song, join in. Lord, I live. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. You came. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. To show, to show the way you did. from the world to the cross. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Glory be your name. You came from heaven. You came from heaven. I don't think we're getting it. You came from heaven to earth not because you had to but because you love me because he loves us Yahweh allowed Yeshua to come down and die on Calvary's cross 
You came from heaven. Hallelujah. To earth. And from the earth, you went to the cross where you died. And then you were resurrected and you rose. Lord, I lift your name on high. I know who you are, Yah. I know who you are, Yahweh. In spite of all the craziness that I've experienced this week, I know who you are. And I know who I belong to. Do you know who you belong to? Do you know who you belong to? You belong to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Great y'all. You Halloween. came from heaven Halloween. to earth to show the way. From the cross to the cross, my dead to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came, you came. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth. night we were doing a devotion do you remember what we were doing for devotion last night we were having a good time we were singing it and little Knox looked at us and kept saying sing it over and over and over and over and over he never got tired of hearing it and when we sing praises to God and little children the Bible says to suffer the little children not to come unto him and to forbid them not because you know, she would knew there was something special about children. He knew that their hearts were innocent. He knew that they had absolute total love, total trust. And so we're going to sing that little song. What was the song? It was um, Victory is Mine. Victory. How many of us have problems in our lives and we need to be victorious? How many of us? turned to y'all this week and said help me through because I got a problem help me through because I can't take no more help me through help me understand help me process help me walk this road because at the end of the day we want victory yes yes I don't want to sing by myself come on we all have a testimony victory is mine Victory is mine, victory today is mine, oh, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine, one more time, victory is mine, victory is mine.
the band play.
bless his name, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his whole name. For just a few minutes, let us praise God. Everybody to the loud, is as loud as you can be. Let heaven know that we're few in number. Let heaven know that we give God the praise. Let heaven know that Yah is the most important. Hallelujah! Touch us right now. Touch us right now. 
just one touch from you will make everything all right. Just one word from you will make everything all right. We need a word, we need a word. We need a word, we need a word. At the church, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Feels mighty nice in here. I want y'all to know, don't you know that the enemy, he is mad with us on this morning. Hallelujah. To my family who went down in that precious name all last week. Don't you know the enemy, he didn't like that. He didn't like, he's mad with you. Hallelujah. And I'm not surprised if he didn't even try to attack you on this week. Because he didn't like what you did. You said yes, and you went down in that powerful, matchless name. But I come to tell you and serve notice on this afternoon to let you know everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be, you hear me, Brother Karen? Everything is going to be all right because Yahweh has chosen you. He's chosen you. He's chosen you. There's a reason that he brought you this way. And the enemy is trying to intercept your blessings because he knows what Yahweh has for you. Yes, he do. He knows it. So he's going to do everything he can to discourage you. But I tell everybody, you know what? We are practitioners of righteous living. We're not perfect, but we're living to be perfect. We're living to please Yahweh. And every day we're living to get this thing right. One of the things I've prayed this week, I've been praying. I said, Father, what is it that you want me to say to our people on this week? What is it that they need to hear on this week? And he spoke to me and said, you tell my family to take one day at a time because I'm walking with them and I'm navigating he told me to tell you also close your ears to some of the things that the enemy now is trying to put in it. Got a word for you. They got a word for you. But you only hear the voice of Yahweh. You hear what I say? People are going to come through with all kind of knowledge. Even some people that I know, some of my friends, they speak word. But one thing I tell them, I say, I don't move until Yahweh tell me to move. And except Yahweh reveal the things to us, we won't know because it's hidden somewhere. That's why we have a problem now about people accepting the name Yeshua. It's because it's been antiquated. But the good news is that Yahweh is revealing, and, and yes, he is. He's revealing great things, God, that Yahweh has in store for you, brethren, for this ministry. Great things. Great things. And you can rest assured the devil is going to come at you. You may be seated. You may be seated. As I was praying the other day, I heard the voice speak to me. And he said, Sutton, about my name. He said, There's power in my name. He said, But your mission. 
isn't to tell the people about my name. Your mission is the great commission that I've given the disciples. And I say, go to, he said, go to far into the world to teach and preach the gospel of Yeshua. Preach repentance to man. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But everything that we do, we do it in his name. When we pray, we pray in his name. When we cast out devils, we do it in his name. That's what we have to do. That's our mission. It's to preach repentance. When we go outside these doors, we, pre we preach repentance. Who are you? I'm a disciple of Yeshua. What's your message? My message is repent from your sins. Turn from your wicked ways. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Ah, glory. Don't you know Yahweh will make the message clear to you? I'm not going to be long. I'm going to go right into my sermon. But you all know me by now. I move when the Holy Spirit moves. And I speak as the Spirit gives utterance. And when the Spirit stops speaking, I stop talking. <laughs> I never give you me. It's so good to see you all. Did I have a good week this week? Yeah. Did I have a good week? Yeah. We have a, we have several testimonies this week. Yeah, been some challenges this week. Uh, Brother Marcellus, uh, Brother Marcellus had two job offers this week, not one. Man, he was saying, "Any, meeny, mighty, mo, which one I'm going to take?" Yeah, yeah, we, we're praying. One of the things that I do around here is I say, Father, I don't want nobody in this ministry to go lacking. Nobody. And then when we do work, and we de definitely have to have a job that's going to allow us to live in an overflow. I don't claim, you know, you know we, we do what we have to do, uh, but, but, you know, but we, we have to do better than McDonald's and fast food chains and stuff because Yahweh has given us intelligence. Is that all right? And then you do what you have to do. And I, I tell, I told my son, I had a conversation with him this week. Which one of these? Y'all, you chose this one. I would have chose that one, but that's all right. It's your life to live. But I would have chose this one. Why, why am I saying it? Because uh, Yahweh is going to bless. Let me, see, let me see the hands of those who are unemployed in here. Unemployed. What's your name, brother? I forgot you told me last week. Dre? Okay, okay, okay. What I want you to do is I want you to send me your resume. In the next 30 days, we ain't going to have nobody unemployed in here. You're going to have a job. You hear me what I'm saying? Brianna, I'm working on you, my sister. Hallelujah. What? 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 Hallelujah. Come up here and testify. Come up here and testify. I want to hear it. Come up here and testify. When Yahweh do something good for you, you got to tell it. Oh, my, 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 my. That's what I'm talking. I mean, all week I've been praying, praying, praying over your application. Yahweh already did it. <laughs> Know what you want me to say? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just last week I really kind of like started buckling down um, and just praying about everything, um, and just really like I guess since it was the Passover week, you're supposed to like take all the leaven out of your heart. So I really just been praying all week, like um, you know, whatever is not supposed to be there, just take it out. You know, I just want to be like. The most real, most 
most pure version of me. So I just been praying, and um, I don't know. I never really lost faith with like my job situation. I was just like, you know, it is what it is. I just gotta like every day when I pray, um, I do the Lord's prayer after all of my prayers because I want to just make sure like I know like He said He's gonna bring the Holy Spirit to decipher our prayers for us because we don't. He said we're not gonna even know how to pray when we get out of the captivity. So I just say, I know, I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer, I know it's perfect every time. Yeah. So anything that I left out, you know, I just want to make sure I, it's perfect every time. It's covered. Um, so, I don't know, i just been just keeping myself calm and just really focusing and knowing that he's there to protect me and he has me and he guides me. So um, I got a call and I went in for the interview. Um, and the lady, we just talked. It just felt like we knew each other forever. Um, and we were just talking, and she was like, you know, it's just something about you. She was like, I just really like you. Um, and so she was like, I'm, I'm not the, the final say. The CEO is the final say. Um, so I'm going to have to have you come in for another interview. But I really like you, so I'm going to highly recommend you. Um, so she was like, you should get a call by Monday. And then Monday, I didn't get a call. But I was like, you know what? I really I know I did a good job. I'm just gonna, you know, see how this plays out. Um, so Thursday rolls around. She's like, "Can you come in?" So I was, uh, someone else was supposed to come in for me, but she called and was like, she couldn't come in. So I ended up being the first person that she saw, and um, she was like, "I don't know what's going on. My CEO is really busy, so he just told me to do the interview." Uh, yeah, and. Um, so we just got to talking, and she was just like, well, I, I highly recommended you. Um, so, you know, I just want you to go through the, we're going to go through the process. So I went through the interview. I did everything I was supposed to do. Um, she went back and talked to the CEO, and they offered me the job on the spot. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> so it was, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It just makes me feel really good to know that I'm, like, doing what I'm supposed to be yeah, doing. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I start on Monday. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Because the church said hallelujah. hallelujah. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah? I just preached a few weeks ago. I was talking about the righteousness of Yahweh. So, you know, you don't, a lot of times you don't have to qualify for something because he delights in you. He finds favors in you. And you don't have to do nothing. I'm telling you, you, you did you hear that? It's talking like the norm and, and she found favor. She found favor. That's what y'all would do. You know, when you walk up right, he would give you favor. You don't have to worry about, that's what they don't worry about these applications when they say, what's your qualifications? You don't have to worry about this. Just write down what you write down and submit it and watch it always move in your favor. Did you have your hand up to something you want to say? Come, come on, brother. I'm, you know, I'm trying to learn that new name you gave me last week. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I, I just want to say that um, keeping Yah's law, statutes, and commandments, it, it, it lines us up with him. You know, it, 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 it makes us walk upright with him. Um, stay on the straight and narrow. Uh, uh, um, it, it allows us, it allows him to use us. It allows him to, to lead and guide us instead of us trying to lead and guide ourselves. When the, when the children came, when the, when the children of Israel came out of uh, Egypt into the wilderness, they was murmuring and complaining. Oh, you bring us all the way out here for, for us not to have food, drinking water? I parted the seas for you. Y'all parted the seas for you. And you mean to tell me that you can't just ask him for something he give it to you? He will give you whatever you desire as long as you listening to him. And understand what he wants to do in your life. Y'all loves all of us and the minute we line up with him, he can start to push us in the direction that he wants us to go. We are not leading our lives. Hallelujah.
Coming for my young guns. I call my young men young guns. Our men, they coming up pretty soon. But uh, that was just so true. It was such, such a blessing. Oh, man, I love Yahweh, man. And I love his people. And one of the things I promise, I, I, one of the things that I, even I said on, on social network, my little prayer, was, Father, uh, not my wisdom, uh, uh, you know, not, no, not my wisdom, my, not my knowledge or what I say, but it's about what your wisdom is and what your word is for your people. And that's, and that's what I'm going to do is to present his word, not Harold Sutton, not, not at all, and, and things like that. But I'm so excited for what he's doing in this place. And, well, you can play those drums, boy. <laughs> I mean, look, I look, I, I posted that video. I, I sent it to y'all from that video y'all did out in the playground. Man, I, I, I think it was yeah, the, yeah, the parking lot. Yeah, the parking lot at the church last week. Man, I, now I know I had over 100 views, and 100 of those views are mine because I watched <laughs> I really enjoyed I I can't wait to Wednesday to you do your thing. Yeah, to do your thing. Okay, let me start because I'm going to, I say we're going to get out of 1.30 today. On today, we're going to share with you on how to prepare that spiritual foundation through the word of Yahweh Reformation Act. The Reformation Act that will activate what I call is your spiritual auto defense triggering mechanism. In other words, your filtering system for reaction and response that will protect you from manufacturing offenses. The Bible Reformation Act is the word of Yahweh. John 15 and 3 say, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The word will reform you. In other words, the word, the word of Yahweh, it will improve you. It will conform you. It will bring you into harmony in one accord transform you it will change the outward form appearance and your character it will convert you in other words that person you used to be you will no longer be that per person the places you used to go that you had no business going guess what you ain't going to those places no more because you've been transformed you're now walking in the newness of your mind you have a new mindset now now, having the ability to activate this defense mechanism at the point of offense is essential in your kingdom walk. Amen. Let me ask you this. How many times people get caught reacting to an unexpected situation that oftentimes challenges their faith? I don't know about you, but every now and then, I have one of those moments, and it, and it reminds me, matter of fact, it, it caused me to have a back-in-the-day moment. But the Spirit of Yahweh reminds me whose I am and who I am. Every day we are all, we are all tried through fiery trials and temptations. However, having this triggering mechanism embedded as a foundation will guarantee better results. See, when God created us, he made us flesh, a human being, not a total spirit being or spiritual being. God made us in his, Yahweh made us in his image and likeness, but with limited abilities. We are an incredible creation with extraordinary abilities, likewise unto our creator, but with limited range. We are finite, but God, uh, Yahweh, our creator, is infinite and has no boundaries or limits. Now, when God breathed life into man, man became a living soul in an earthen vessel made of clay. We are just dirt. The very natural existence of man is nothing but the earth. Nothing but the earth. 
My brothers and sisters, I do submit to you a truth that although this body of earth and clay is a wonderful masterpiece that was molded by the hands of Elohim the potter and created in his image and likeness, but do know that our flesh is a trap of weakness. Let me say that again. Our flesh is a trap of weakness. That's why it's important that we have to control it and contain it. We are not to let the flesh rule us. But we got to tell flesh what to do. I mean, some people have all kinds of challenges when it comes to their flesh. I'm pretty good with controlling my flesh. But I must confess, when it comes to fried food and Popeye's chicken, man, I be struggling. I remember one time I was, I was driving home, and, uh, and I said to myself, I, I, and this is right after I said, you know, I'm not going to eat no more chicken. I'm not, and I wasn't eating no chicken. I haven't eaten, eaten chicken for maybe about a month. I was doing good, good. But that craving hit me. It hit me, Brother Robinson. It, that craving hit me, man. And so on the way home, now see, before I get to my house, I passed three Popeyes. So when I passed the first Popeyes, I said, oh, you know, I wasn't like, oh, I, I, I wasn't that bad. I wasn't that bad. But I knew in the back of my mind that there was two more to go. And so as I went up the highway and took the exit, there was another Popeyes. And I went like, I went like, say to the Lord, God will rebuke you. I ain't getting no chicken. I ain't had chicken for a whole month. I ain't getting no chicken. I wasn't that bad, old Brother Robinson. But I had one more to go. I got not too far from the house and there was a Popeyes. And so I managed to fight and I passed that Popeyes and I went to the other direction towards my house. I was excited, Brother Curtis. I said, I won that battle. And I got two blocks from the house, man, and that, that thing hit me, man. I made a new turn and went back to the Popeyes. So we battle, many of us battle, when it comes to the flesh, we have weakness in other areas. Some people can handle this and some can handle that. But nevertheless, the, the flesh challenges us. It does. It challenges us. Now, I want to, well, let me go to Romans um, out of this particular pericope, uh, I'm going to get a point out of there. Let's go to Romans 7, 18. Romans 7, 18. We are grateful for our media ministry. We have somebody back there to operate our media ministry. Yes! Yes, Bree! <laughs> I'm telling you. Verse 18 says, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Does anybody struggle with something sometimes? Oh, yes, we do. We struggle. So the things are where we are weak at, those are the things that we have to spend time to, to fortify ourselves, to make us stronger, where we have to learn how to resist. That's one reason why I like to fast. It teaches me discipline. It teaches me discipline. When you have no control, that's a bad thing. 
A man that has no control, he, 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 he said to turn up away. Because most cases, he'll succumb to anything. The flesh, it demands to be satisfied. It demands to be satisfied by the various appetites that rule the physical realm. And so by nature, we oblige the flesh. And all the time, you know, a lot of time people like to equate this with, uh, with a sexual thing. All the time it's not sexual. I know a lot of men that have control over themselves. They can be in a, 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 a what you call it, a monography, what you call it? A, 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 yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Th th thank you. They can do that. Then you have other men who just don't have any morals at all. They, they all out of control. But once you have morals, you have morals, you, that's not going to be an issue for you. It's not. As a young man, that was a big challenge for me because I ain't had no morals. I grew up in a town down on Berry Farms. I grew up in Berry Farms. My hero was a young man, it was two young men, I ain't gonna call their name because they still living and they watch my program. But, <laughs> but there was two young men, by the time they was in the eighth grade, they had seven babies by seven different women. In our neighborhood, they were the men. And so that's how I grew up. And that mindset that we didn't have no role, role, role models because there was no husband, no father, mother. There, there, was, a, there was a bunch of single women with a bunch of kids. And so when I look, I saw, I saw all of these, these girls was fighting. They'd be in the street fighting over these dudes. They were the man. So that influenced me. So I thought by the time I was like, like 18 when I was going to the service and, and things like that, you know, I thought that, I thought that was okay. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I grew up with this. I thought it was okay. It was nothing for man to have baby here, baby there, baby there, baby there. Because I didn't have, first of all, no one to teach me. I had never had a mentor. And so you have a lot of men that deal with this with their flesh and have no control over their flesh. But that's not really where I wanted to go. I just stuck right there. I just, I just had a moment in time thanking Yahweh for bringing me out of that mess and, and put me in a position where I can control my flesh. In, the, in our flesh, dwells no good thing, but of our spirits are the components that house our perceptions, our psychological our things on how we see things and how we feel about things that is created and processed in our mind. Our mind receives all of this information and communications from our sensories of touch, smell, hearing, vision, and taste, and it releases its reaction and response to the interpretation of the data received which influences our spirit causes of action. Let me say it again. Upon it, it is a reaction and response to the interpretation of the data received which influence our spirit course of action. There has to be a filtering system in place to redirect the negative offensive that is directed at us. Therefore, we must tap into that spiritual fountain that is created by the word of Yahweh because if we don't, we will respond out of our nature which is designed to defend and protect itself. The word instructs us to follow peace with all men. Many times, the thing it is when people come at you, this is the way, to, see, and that's the way he designed us. Through our senses, what we see, with our, what our perception is. If we feel that we are in imminent danger, what are we going to do? We're going to take steps. We're going to protect ourselves. If we feel that we're being threatened, we're going to do what we have to do to protect ourselves. 
So the idea is that when you have this, this filtering system in place, what happens is that that which you perceive, and you can see it. You know that they mean you no good. You know that they're out for a fight because when they go through that filtering system, then you know what the reality is. But when you put it through that, when you process it through the filtering system, then you're not going to react and respond the way normal people would through the flesh. What you're going to do, you're going to say, uh, I'm going to redirect this. So that's why you find yourself, have you, I mean, did you find yourself sometime, you know, you be in a situation, you may be in a discussion, a, a little argument or whatever, you feel it getting out of control or whatever, and you know things are escalating, and then all of a sudden you, you, know, you decide to back off. Okay, you're right, bro, not a problem, my bad, my bad. It's not that you're wrong, but you know where that thing is heading. So you're trying to defuse the situation. Why are you trying to defuse it? Because what happened is through your spiritual intellect, you, you, you're perceiving what's going on. And so you say, okay, well, now I have to allow my light to shine. I just can't act the way I used to act when back in the days. So now I'm a new creature. You know, I'm born again. So now let me mirror the kingdom of heaven. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to redirect this, all this negative energy. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to say, you know what? You're right. Although you're although you're not wrong, but what you're gonna, you know, you're right. You know, my 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 bad, my bad. And that's why it's important to have the spiritual foundation. Now the question I ask: How do we start with the process of building the spiritual foundation? The very first thing you need to do is take inventory and check out what's in your spirit. And everything that's toxic, you need to get rid of it. Everything that's toxic, you got to get rid of it. Because anything that's toxic is, is deadly. You got to get rid of it. I'll show you how to do it. An easy self-check. That's why I heard somebody say um, in your video, you said something. Be careful what, what your eyes see, what you put in your eyes. What, 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 what was the word to that part? You remember that? You be careful what you put in your eyes. So my question is, what are you putting in your spirit? There you go. So you have to be very careful. I tell people a lot of times, people, I say, first of all, we're supposed to be people of the kingdom, and, 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 and I, I don't understand why people watch a bunch of junk on television. What's those shows, those Tyler Perry shows and those other shows, a lot of filth shows, sex and killing and all that kind of stuff, and people can't wait to see him. Can't wait to see him. I'm like, what's wrong with y'all? Don't you know, you, I mean, the word, is, the word speaks against this, and you're being entertained by this filth. What's wrong with y'all? You have to be careful what you put into your spirit. Let's check out our spirit. Galatians 5.22. I'm almost finished. Galatians 5.22. So a lot of us are, I have the Holy Spirit in me. Okay, we're going to see. This is a, we're going to do a self-examine check right here. Everybody have it? Galatians 5.22. Thank you, Bree. <laughs> but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. These are the fruits of the Spirit. That's why I have problems. A lot of times I, I visit churches and I, I see some of the people, and I, I'm not the type of person to judge, but it's nothing to judge because it's right there in front of you. These people are supposed to be born again and full of Yahweh's spirit and, and his love, but yet they are so nasty. You ever seen church folk being so nasty? I mean, really, really nasty. Nasty. 
But the fruits of the Spirit is right here. It's love. Peace. Gentleness. Goodness. I'm not going to elaborate on all of them, but you know what it means. So let's check our spirits. Are we possessing all of this? Because if we're not possessing all of this, we, gotta, we just have to work on it. Okay? Because we're building up our spiritual foundation. And it's okay. We are work in progress. I say all the time, we are practitioners of righteous living. Every day, Yahweh gives us grace, new mercy. We see it every morning. And he gives us that new mercy so we can work on the building. So every day, that's why I don't have time to get in nobody else's business. I mind my own business because I got to work on me. Love, do I have him? Am I full of love? Joy. Am I following peace with everybody? In my long suffering, do I have the patience to, to, to deal with other people who are struggling? Do I have the patience to work with them or do I turn against them? Do I just give up on them? Y'all sure wouldn't give up on us. <laughs> but this is what I really want you to do. This one is really important. Now the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19. It may be above that, but let's see. Has the machine gone? Okay. Now listen, now listen to this. This is the works of the flesh. That's why the Bible say, in flesh dwells no good thing. Look at this. This is what the writer says here. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Next scripture. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, uh -huh. envying, keep going, murderers, drunkenness, uh huh, uh huh, mm -hmm. uh huh, shall not. Inherit the kingdom of God. This is the work of the flesh. So if you find yourself in a situation, if you fall under these categories somewhere, you need to get rid of it. Because if you have one of them, the Bible says you shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. You're not going to inherit it. That's why I don't understand why people could be so comfortable in, in being flawed. They're comfortable at it. Living under the umbrella of grace. But grace, the Bible said in Romans, that shall a man continue in sin that G-R-A-C-E, grace, may abide God, Yahweh forbid. So I don't want to hear that oh, no, nobody's perfect. You ain't perfect. I told y'all last week in June, first chapter, first, first 26, unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. So I just gave you a map. I don't even have to say no more. We as practitioners of righteous living, let us work on the fruits of the Spirit and grow them in our lives. The fruits, let them come forth. Let it blossom. Let it be sweet. 
and the lust of the flesh. Let's work on doing away with every last one of them. Don't underestimate the flesh. Don't underestimate the flesh. If you know you have a weakness, don't put yourself in harm's way. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we, get in, 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 <laughs> we get in a place where we feel that we're strong now because now I'm, I'm in church, I'm in Yahweh, I read my Bible, I fast and pray. And so sometimes, you know, you, you may think that when those past things or past attractions that at one time used to bother you, you feel that, oh, I can conquer it now, that I'm okay because I have Yahweh's spirit in me, but don't put yourself in harm's way. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Because where you may think you're strong, because the enemy, he's, he's conniving. And especially for our men, he'll set you up real good. If you get a late call, I don't know, they call them booty calls. You, 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 you know that they have, they have no good intentions. If they calling you, telling you to come over, and it's after 7 o'clock p.m., they have no good intentions for you. So you have to protect yourself. Women! Man, call you, talking about something, you know, you just wanted to come by, I'm thinking about you. It's 9 o'clock in the evening. You got to watch that rascal. You know, you may think you're strong, but all the time you're not, you know, you may not be as strong as you think you are because the flesh is something. You can be sitting there and you're doing okay, and all of a sudden you grab your hands and start rubbing your hands. You start feeling warm and feeling good, nice conversation going on. The next thing you know, a little kiss here, a little kiss there. The next thing you know, boom. What happened? So we have to be careful not to put ourselves in harm's way. We have to be very careful. Run the Bible say resist the enemy. And if you have that, if you have to do a Joseph number, you know, Potiphar's wife came after Joseph. They saw that good looking handsome man and, and John and wanted, 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 wanted to take him. Joseph ran, 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 ran. And Joseph said, no way, I will not defile my temple. I will not sin against my Yahweh. He didn't say, I won't touch another man's wife. He put, put Yahweh first. I will not sin. And that's what we have to have in our mind. Because we're going to be... We're going to be tempted with all kinds of things, but you have to have You have to love Yahweh so much when you say, I will not sin against Yahweh. I will not defile my temple. So we have to prepare our temples by giving it a spiritual foundation. And how do we do that? We just take the word and place the word there. And so when the enemy comes with his tricks, you can respond just like the Shiva did when he was in the wilderness in his weakened state. And the devil came to him and said, if thou be, throw yourself in here unless you dash your feet against the stone. And, and how did the Shiva respond? He responded with the word. And one thing, and, and, and we know the prince, I'm telling you, the prince of the air, you're talking about uh, an illusion, the lord of illusions. And you're thinking the prince of the air, he, he put Yahshua in a place where he created an illusion and set a city, saw him in the city high. He said, look, I'll give you all of this. Now, we're talking about Yeshua, the son of, he, he, in other words, he's capable of fooling you. He makes it look good. That's it. That's it. So you have to be careful. But how did Yahshua 
you should respond in the word. Man shall not live by bread alone. So my brothers and my sisters, I'm, I'm done. Send to your feet. I'm done. I, I'm done. Remember, daily work on our spiritual foundation. Because if we work on our spiritual foundation, if we love, what, what was the commandment? Uh, Yeshua, before he left, he said, love the Lord your Yahweh with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You had a question? Not a question. Uh, some of that was just our spiritual foundation is our, our spiritual uh, connection, that thing that keeps us from sinning mm -hmm. is, is to is all established. That's right. That is, that is our spiritual foundation to keep us from falling astray right. and going off the, the path. That's right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, but the, you know, but, but the problem I have, let me say the problem I have with some people. Some people have the knowledge of people. Some people know it, but they don't apply it. You'd be surprised. A lot of people have this word, but they won't apply it. And that's where the problem is. See, it does us no good if we don't allow the words that shine in our life to come. If we don't become the living word. See, we, you know, it's like the scribes and Pharisees, their problem. You know, they knew the law inside and out, but yet they rejected the Messiah. Father, we thank you once again for your word. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you, Father, for loving us so much, so much. And we ask you, Father, to continue to grace us with your word, uh, with your wisdom, with your knowledge, that we may uh, receive it and live the life that we may become the living word so we can inherit the kingdom, so we can inherit the kingdom, Father. In Yeshua's name, we pray. Hallelujah.